Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. In today's video, we are going to make a card. Not just any card. Y'all, I think this is simply one of the most meaningful cards I've ever made. And maybe it'll spark an idea or two in you. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much for being there for me and thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. I truly appreciate it. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a very personal card that I'm making for someone who means the absolute world to me. I absolutely love this person. I adore this person. And I am in awe of her as a woman. So I made a card that will be very meaningful to her. But you can take this concept and use it for so many different people in your lives. And I think you're going to enjoy the concept that I'm about to share. And y'all, who is this phenomenal person that I'm talking about? Well, it's my oldest daughter, Megan. I feel the same way about my youngest daughter. They mean the absolute world to me. But in this case, this card is geared towards a certain aspect of Megan's life that does not exist in my youngest daughter's life. But y'all make no mistake, even before my daughters were ever born, I loved them. And they have taught me so much as young women. And they've helped me to grow as a woman. What I'm making today really is exclusive to my oldest daughter, Megan, because of a very different aspect of her life from my youngest daughter, Erin. So I'm going to flip to my overhead camera to give you a closer look at what I'm talking about and you'll see why this card is so meaningful to me. All right, I'm zooming in to give you a better look at this card. This is a card that I'm sending my oldest daughter, Megan. She is the mother of my two grandchildren, Kathleen and Charles. And I am just in awe of her as a mother and this card will speak volumes to her and she'll know exactly what it means when she reads it. But what I have here is it says a mother understands what a child does not say. And this is a Jewish proverb. Then I have a bouquet of flowers and I have Kathleen and Charles right here. But what I'm trying to zoom in on, and I don't know if you're able to see it. I'm going to see if you can see it on this bigger piece. What I did is sprinkle throughout the flower bouquet what looks like foliage and curly cues are the names of my grandchildren. So I sprinkled those throughout. But here's the beautiful thing about this card. The flowers in the card represent their birth months. So I have chrysanthemum for my granddaughter Kathleen and daffodils for my grandson Charles. So this will be a very meaningful card to my daughter, not just because of the flower part, but also because of the message that I have on here. So hopefully you can see their names intertwined throughout. I thought it was just so cute. And I could actually cut this out and frame it and give it to her in a frame if I wanted to as well. But I wanted to make sure that I made her a very special card for Mother's Day because I do think that she is a phenomenal mother. When I watch her, I think she's actually the mother that I wish that I had been. I think I was a good mother, but y'all, I think she's a great mother. So I really want her to know that. And for those of you who might be looking for a special card making technique, I think you'll enjoy this one because it does not involve much. Now I did use Canva for this and this is how I placed everything down like this so that I could group it all together and print. But there are so many other applications out there. Just go to the app store and look up image editing type programs. It doesn't take much because if I can do Canva like this, you guys can do it as well. And to find the information about the flowers that was applicable to when my grandchildren were born, I use this site here that's on screen. I will have it linked in the description box below so you can go out and find which flowers represent the months that you're interested in. Then you can go out and find images of those flowers and just layer them in a way that I have done here. Now I'm not going to be demoing the technique of how to layer the flowers and how to create this image because we're not all using the same programs. So if you have a program that you like to use, go ahead and use that. Or if you want a quick tutorial on how to use Canva, there are bunches of tutorials on YouTube that will help walk you through how to use the basics 
of the free side of Canva. Canva does offer a pro Canva that costs, but they also have a basic, and I did this in basic. So y'all, here's my card. It is a four and a quarter by five and a half. Very meaningful on the outside. I kept the inside blank because this is where I truly am going to write a nice little message. And here is what I am going to be using to make my card. So I have a piece of foil and it's gold. And I'm going to use that just as I've used it here. And I have printed images that I'll be using. I have a piece of 11 and 3 quarter by 11 and 3 quarter inch lightweight um, paper that we're going to be using to make the envelope. And then I have a piece of 12 by 12 that I will cut down so that we can make the card. So let's just go ahead and cut this down to five and a half. You can make two cards from one 12 by 12 inch piece to eight and a half. Then we're going to take this and on the eight and a half inch side, we're simply going to score at four and a quarter. And y'all, this is going to give us our card base. So I'll just go ahead and put that down. And there's the card base. So now I want to take this piece and I want a piece that is five and a quarter by four. And this is what we'll place on here. Then I'm going to take these pieces and let's see if we have a piece that is approximately three and three quarters. We do. And then I want it to be five. So I am just going to cut off a little bit at the top and then I'll cut it down to five. And naturally my little card is not going to be perfect, but it's handmade and it will be perfect to my daughter. So now we're going to take this piece and we simply layer it right there. I am using a tape runner that I have been trying behind the scenes for about three weeks now. This is the one that you've seen me using on camera. I'm really not that thrilled with it, so it's not one that I would definitely say, okay, it would be a go-to for me. I'm going to keep using it because yes, I have paid for it, but I really do like these and I'm going to have it linked in the description box below. It is not a straight strip, it is dotted. So when you put it down, you do have the little dots, but what I'm finding is that I am getting the coverage the stick, as well as the immediate release when I lift up that I need from a tape roller. So I am just going to show you how easily this goes down. And y'all, there are almost 60 feet on this roll. And that is a lot of tape coverage. It's just as much as I was getting when I was using the full mark tape runners, but I tell you what, full mark wants $45 for 12 tape runners. And that's just too much for me. So I had to let them go, but you can see how beautiful my little card is. I am going to go ahead and take this piece and we're going to use it as scrap. I'm going to flip it over on the back side, and I'm going to cut out two pieces that are three and three quarters by five. We're going to use that on the inside. And you can see how easily my little card is coming together, but I hope that you can see just how meaningful a card like this really is. So I am just going to add some of my tape. We can take this piece and put it down right there. And I'll take some tape here. And 
And if you're interested in these tape rollers, they are going to be linked below and they will be in my Amazon storefront. I do encourage you to go out, do your homework on the tape runners by reading the reviews of others, as well as reading the information from the manufacturer to make sure that this is going to meet your paper crafting needs. So I am just going to take these little enamel dots, and these are actually from Christmas, but they work. And I'm just going to take, I'm going to take one and we're going to put it right there on that bow. I can take others and sprinkle them around, but I think that I just want to leave this nice, clean, and simple. So now I have two cards. I really only need one, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you the process that I used. Now let's go ahead and make our envelope. And if you watch the envelope making video, that I did, this process is going to be very familiar to you. If you didn't, I'll have it linked in the description box below as well, because I think it's very helpful to show you how I decide how I'm going to make an envelope. All right, so we're going to take our card and we know that this is five and a half and we add one eighth of an inch to that five and a half and we're starting with a card that is five and five eighths of an inch. And this is how wide we start with, but then we want to add an inch for both sides of that card. So we're going to add two inches to the five and five eighths, and that takes us to seven and five eighths. And now we can cut. And then on this side, we know that our card is four and a quarter, and our first score is going to be the true size of the card so let's just go ahead and score at four and a quarter. Then in order to fold over, we know we have to fold this over even to this. This will be four and a quarter plus four and a quarter. It's eight and a half. But then we add that one eighth again so that we have our buffer room. So four and a quarter. Let's go ahead and add the next four and a quarter. That takes us to eight and a half. And then let's add that one eighth of an inch to eight and five eighths. And then this is going to be my fold over flap. So now on the seven and five eighths inch side, we score at one and then we rotate it to the opposite seven and five eighths inch side and we score at one. So y'all, that little formula is going to work on most envelope sizes that you'll be making as long as your card is not chunky, because if it's chunky, then you need to tweak it. Or your card is not a jumbo card. If it's jumbo, then you might have to add two sheets of paper together to get the sizing that you need. So now we're going to take our finger blade and we want to free the center tab. So we'll angle in on that score and we angle in on this one. And that frees the center tab for us. We're going to do the same thing here and here. That frees the center tab. Then using a downward motion, we cut to remove these end pieces. And y'all can see that envelope starting to take shape. Now the widest part here, this is the bottom of the envelope. The smaller part is your fold over flap. So I am just going to take my scissors and I like to round with my scissors. This is not something you have to do. This is just one of those little things that I like to do. If you have a corner rounder, you can use that for this part as well. And to answer a question that one of you had for me, when you see me tossing things off to the side here, I'm not throwing them on the floor. I have a box attached right here. It holds all of my discards. So now I'm just going to take my glue. We'll add some glue there, some glue there, and then a little bit of glue along the edge here. And 
and then we can fold up and over getting that nice and stuck. Now I can take my card and we should be able to put this card in our envelope like this. It goes in and I can fold over and then I can address the front. So to seal my envelope, I am just going to take some tape, my double stick tape, put it right there and then when I'm ready to mail this, I have it good to go. So there y'all is our envelope, as well as our beautiful, meaningful card. Super, super easy. It's not over the top. It is very clean and simple and very one dimensional, but I think it'll convey the highly personal message that I want it to convey. And remember, YouTube has some wonderful tutorials out there on how to use Canva, Adobe, all types of illustration programs that are out there to help walk you through a process like this. I don't think that I'm qualified to walk you through it. I know a little bit. I know enough to be just a little bit dangerous, but I think that I'd probably end up confusing you more than helping you. And that is why I'm pointing you in the direction of people who might specialize in helping us to understand Canva and Adobe. That is how I learned the little bit that I know from watching those videos. But I hope that you've enjoyed this idea and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, y'all, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.